Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kitchen Fitzsimon. I'm a local real estate agent here in Sarasota. And today's video is about the latest market data. We're going to look at May data just to give us a better idea of whether this is a seller's market, a buyer's market, a slow market, a fast selling market. And so if you're in the market to purchase, or maybe you're someone who is looking to sell, you have a better idea of what to expect when it comes to market performance. It's also going to help you in terms of strategizing to ensure that you win in today's real estate market. First impression in terms of how the housing market here in Sarasota is doing, it is completely different now than it was two years ago in terms of how fast homes are selling, the offer prices coming in. And so if you're a home seller, it is much more of a biased market now, not because the prices are coming down, because the prices are actually not coming down. There might be a lag period here and we may have to wait another two or three months to see what the later numbers are going to tell us, but in terms of overall median prices for single family homes and even condos, the prices are actually up versus same time last year. So we always have to look at the price performance in comparison to last year because there's just so many fluctuations throughout the year, especially once we go into the summer months, which we're in now, we can expect prices to come down. And I'll bet you when that happens, a lot of the news articles are going to be calling a crash when in fact, every year in the summertime the prices will come down having said that the prices are holding but what we are seeing is that it takes much longer for a home to sell for a home to go pending it could take two three four five months really depending on where the home is the property style how updated it is what we're seeing is that homes aren't flying like pancakes anymore two years ago three years ago you could have a home hit the market and the next day it would go pending we're not seeing that anymore and that's totally okay because what we had just a few years ago was not sustainable. It was just such an unusual time in the real estate market. And when it comes to statistics, that time is actually called an outlier. Hopefully we'll never have a pandemic and a pandemic driven real estate market. When we look at real estate data, it is so important that we give it context. In the form of performance, I usually call it having a benchmark. And to give it context, it's so important to look at years that are much more statistically sane when it comes to how a real estate market should be performing. And so I compare the data to 2019, which is really a year prior to the onset of COVID. And so if we compare how long it takes for a home to sell, for example, it seems like it's just dragging on when homes are pending, when they're actually selling, when in fact, it is just much more what it used to be like in 2019. It is much easier for a buyer now to negotiate a deal, to find homes. There's way more homes on the market. And for sellers, you can't just shoot for the moon and expect a buyer to provide you with that offer. It's just much harder to sell a home, especially because there's also way more options that buyers have. And so if a home is overpriced, the buyer has another option that is to go to a home that's very similar, but better priced. And so there's options and that's impacting how buyers are shopping the market and how sellers should be reacting. Let's actually look at the median prices for single family homes because the story on the condo side is going to be a little different and I'll tap into that later on in this video. But looking at single family homes, Sarasota, so this is not Sarasota County, but Sarasota. And the reason why I'm very keen on enunciating this in this video is because Sarasota County is made out of different cities and some of them in Sarasota County will not be doing as well, such as Northport. And so when we look at Sarasota County overall numbers, they're going to be dragging down somewhat. So the median price right now for May is $565,000 for single family homes. And that's a price increase of over 2% versus the same time last year. So prices have gone up in the single family home category. Why I typically like to look at median prices is because it really is on average what you could be expecting to pay for a single family home here in Sarasota. The average price, and I can do that right now, the average price for single family homes is $901,000. And that's actually a price increase of over 11%. But I don't give it as much value because the average prices are very sensitive 
towards outliers, which could be very expensive homes that were sold or really affordable homes. But in this case, we know that a lot of the luxury buyers are still coming in. And they're actually paying top dollars for homes that are over a million dollars. We're seeing those averages going up quite a bit. We're on the medium price increase. It's much more level headed, I guess you could say. It's just the middle of the pack price that was paid throughout that period in time. In this case, it would be the month of May. You probably hear a lot of people saying that there's just so many properties on the market. Inventory is piling up. It is true. Inventory is piling up, but also inventory was selling so quickly, but that is really to be expected because inventory was just gobbled up two years ago to the point where we didn't have much in inventory. And now buyers are much slower to react for a lot of reasons. There's not as many that are panic driven anymore in this real estate market, which is great. Buyers are able to make much better decisions for themselves and even sellers because they'll have more time to entertain these offers that are coming in. So that inventory is naturally higher than it was two years ago. My worry was that inventory would continue to go up and that's actually not the case. It turned around in April, and May, it started going down. And that is actually very seasonal. Inventory goes up in the beginning of the year, then we get buyers in, and that inventory level will come down. And that's, in essence, what's been happening this year as well. And so when we look at the inventory level in terms of months of supply, the general rule is once it hits six months, it's a very level real estate market beyond six months. If there's over six months of supply, you will start seeing prices come down. That's just a very generalized rule. Right now, when it comes to months of supply for single family homes, we are at just a little bit over four months. What is that saying to us? That it's very unlikely that prices are going to come down dramatically this year. If the inventory level continues to increase beyond what typically happens due to seasonality, then that's gonna become an issue for the real estate market here and prices will come down eventually. It's gotta, something's gotta give. It takes so much longer to sell a real estate property. If you don't compare the data to 2019, which by the way, when compared to 2019, we're actually selling it faster than we did in May of 2019. But if you didn't know that as a listing agent, it would be very easy to start getting really nervous. Am I not doing something right with my marketing? Is this home overpriced? Why is it still sitting on the market two, three months later? Well, naturally, you're gonna have to look at your competition, all these other homes that are being sold in the neighborhood, but on average, it is much more normal these days for a home to sit much longer on the market. And so sellers, if you're currently selling or maybe you're looking to sell fairly soon, you have to expect that the home isn't gonna sell within one month's time and go pending within a week's time. Those days are over and that's okay. It'll take some time longer, but as long as you know it, you can prepare accordingly. The kind of market is a little different, especially these days. And that's really driven by the Surfside Bill, which impacts older buildings that are three three stories and higher. There's a mandate being posed because of the Surfside Bill where older buildings have to go through a milestone inspection and a reserve study. And all of this needs to happen by the end of this year if the building is reaching the age of 30 or if the building is closer to the shore, then it would be the age of 25. The milestone inspection report, the reserve study report, could potentially bring down really high assessments to current homeowners or those who are purchasing into older condos. This fact, along with all the negative headlines that are being written about the condo market, assessments, condo fees going through the roof, have put a damper on demand for condos. And so we're seeing less of a demand for condo, but when we look at the median sales price for condos, that's not currently reflected yet. The median sales price is actually up by 10% versus the same time last year, where now it's at over $400,000. And last year it was at $365,000. But it is my expectation that throughout the year we may actually see those numbers go in the negative. 
And if we were to slice and dice this data and look at much older condos, three stories and higher, I am sure that we're going to see dramatic price drops from where these condos would have been selling at a year ago or two years ago. If you're in the market to purchase a condo, I think it's important that you line up with a buyer's agent that knows how to navigate it, especially some of the older buildings that fall within the Surfside Bill mandate, because not everything is doom and gloom. One of the reasons the Surfside Bill was put into place is the fact that condo associations in the past would sometimes avoid making repairs or increasing the condo fees to bring up the reserves because you know what, who wants to pay extra condo fees? Condo associations have to go through the reserve study. They have to go through an inspection. The reserves have to be brought up to a level where they're able to pay for all these repair works that need to happen to the building. And so it's really good actually that this is in place. The unfortunate part of this is that a lot of the buyers who purchased two, three, four years ago weren't anticipating potentially high assessments and many of them can't afford it. So now they're stuck either having to try to figure out how they can pay off their bills or maybe they have to sell their home altogether. And it's just a really tough position that they're being put into. And it's unfortunate because it would have been avoided if the associations had done what they really should have done. And that is to take care of the building, to get the funds needed, to bring the reserves up, to ensure that the building was well taken care of when repair work needed to happen. Is the Sarasota market crashing? Well, I know for sure that over the last four years, it has not crashed and prices have come up quite a bit. As a matter of fact, over four years, it's close to 50% the prices are up. Is the market changing? The market is definitely changing. Some people are calling it a normalizing market. Are there some cracks in the housing market here in the Sarasota market? Potentially, especially on the condo side. Do we believe that the market is crashing in Sarasota? You know, at the end of the day, nobody really knows. Nobody really has a crystal ball. If you're somebody that's looking to sell in the Sarasota market, I would love to come in and talk to you about how I can provide you with best in class marketing. I'm a former marketing professional. So marketing is in my wheelhouse and I would love to showcase your property to a big audience in order to help you reach your real estate goals. And if you're looking to purchase in the Sarasota market, I would also love to assist you. I know the neighborhoods pretty well and can absolutely help navigate you through this very complex real estate market that we're currently in. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I truly appreciate you and take care.